All right, a scary moment during last night's game between the Miami Dolphins and the Buffalo Bills. Dolphins quarterback Tua Tagovailoa. Oh, I'm sorry, I got this one wrong. Tagovailoa suffered another frightening concussion on the field in front of a national audience. The young quarterback has suffered multiple head injuries during his career, and his latest blow has people asking, should he retire from the NFL? All right, so joining me now is Dr. Steve Brolio. He's the director of the UM Concussion Center and the Neurotrauma Research Laboratory. Okay, doctor, thanks for joining us. This is a big talker today. Tell me, once you have a head injury like this, are you more susceptible to having others? First, uh, thanks for having me on and uh, allowing us to educate your uh, audience on, uh, on this. Um, yeah, we definitely know that once you have one concussion, you're twice as likely to have a second. Once you've had your second, you're three times more likely to have the third. Um, so uh, unfortunately, in Tua's case, I believe this is his third documented concussion in the last yeah. uh, two years. So uh, he's at increased risk at this point. I'll tell you this, you know, with discussions like this, the more we see episodes, the more awareness comes. Is awareness making a difference? Are you noticing any trends at all? Absolutely. Uh, I've been in this space for 20 or 25 years. Uh, and when I started, um, we, uh, the, the treatment, we would really, really laugh at people that had concussions, sadly. Uh, now we, uh, all, every state has uh, rules where you have to remove an athlete from play that has a suspected concussion that can't be returned until evaluated by a medical provider. Uh, and there's a very systematic way that we get people back into their sport safely uh, so we reduce the risk of repeat injury. You know, Dr. Brolio, almost every time we hear about a situation like this or cases like this, we often hear about technology, increasing technology. What types of technology right now is available and being used to help combat issues like this? In, in the football space, the helmets have made astronomical changes in the last 10 or 15 years. Um, you'll see in the, 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 the league, the NFL in particular, the, the helmets they're wearing have panels on all four sides uh, that flex to reduce the, the impact force. Uh, as well as uh, the NFL uh, in the preseason, a lot of the players were wearing the guardian cap, sort of the foam cap that goes out over the helmet, and they're allowing it now for the first time in games. Uh, during the regular season. So I haven't seen the data on the, the Guardian caps yet as to how well they work, um, but uh, I'm excited to see how that looks at the end of the year and hopefully they'll uh, reduce concussion risk. You know, Dr. Bolio, we're talking about this on the heels of that uh, incident with uh, Tao. Let me ask you this. A lot of parents are on the field tonight. They have students who are playing football. It's Friday night. Um, obviously, professionals have trainers. What do the common people need in order to keep mind of uh, issues like this? Hopefully at the high school level, uh, every high school has a, an athletic trainer on the sidelines that's trained to identify conditions like concussion and remove athletes that are suspected to have injury and they can do the evaluation right there, make that decision whether it's safe for the athlete to, to go back or not. Um, in cases where high schools don't have that, um, you know, the parents are really the front line. They know the athlete the best. Uh, and if they feel that their son or daughter, depending on the sport, uh, might be acting a little bit differently than normal, then they shouldn't hesitate uh, to get them to a medical provider and, and get them checked out. Dr. Brillio, thank you so much for giving us some context and perspective. We definitely appreciate your time. Appreciate you.